Hey crafters, today I have a fun crochet project for you. I'm going to show you in this video how to crochet this bag that I am calling a sand dollar swirl bag. It kind of reminds me of a sand dollar, I don't know why. But it's a really fun project to make and there's actually lots of ways to customize this, and add your own design and make it any size you want. So let's jump into the tutorial. <music> Now in this video, I'm going to walk through a specific pattern for this, but I want to first show you the basic concept of this project. Here's basically how this bag works. We are going to start by crocheting a square. And that doesn't look very square, but that's okay. You can make any kind of square you want. I'm going to show you how to create this pattern in a square, but you could do a granny square. You could do a flower here in the middle, whatever kind of square pattern you want. Then once we have our square made, we will turn that square into a rectangle by working a few rows along the top, just back and forth in rows. That will be one side of the bag. Then we'll repeat it all, make another square with whatever kind of design you want, add some rows to one side to turn it into a rectangle, and then we'll stitch these two together, add some handles, and we'll have ourselves a very nice bag. So the point of me showing you that first before jumping in is that if you don't want to use this design as your square piece, I'll pop up with a timestamp of the step after we make the square. So the first thing is to make a square. I'm gonna show you how to make this square. If you don't wanna make this square, make your own square. There's lots of free patterns available online. And then meet me at the part where we turn the square into a rectangle. Last thing I should mention before starting this project is what materials I'm using. I'm going to be using some cotton yarn. This is from Hobby Lobby there. I love this cotton. And I'm using a five millimeter crochet hook. This is my one from Dollar Tree, which I love. And I also plastic dipped it. I will link to those videos up there if you wanna check those out. But the basic idea of this bag, because it's a square that we turn into a rectangle, you can use whatever kind of yarn you want and whatever hook size works well with that yarn. But if you wanna follow along with me exactly, Here's what I'm using, so let's get right into it. So uh, the square piece works in the round. So I'm gonna start with a slip knot, get that on my hook. And I like to do a chain three to make a ring. So one, two, three. But if you prefer the magic ring, feel free to do that. So I'm chaining three and then slip stitching in my very first chain to form a ring. So now for round one, I'm going to do a total of 10 double crochet here, but for my first double crochet, I'm going to do an alternative turning chain. I'll go through this quickly, but if you want that more in depth, click the card up there. Basically, I insert my yarn into the center of the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then it's kind of like we just did a single crochet stitch. I'm gonna insert under the left vertical bar from right to left, insert into there, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, that is the alternative turning chain. That counts as my first double crochet. And now I need to do nine more double crochet into the ring for a total of 10 stitches. So this is double crochet two, double crochet three, and I'll meet you back once I have done all 10. So now I've crocheted my 10 stitches. That's nine double crochet in the alternative turning chain, which counts as our first one. So I'm gonna count back to the top of the first thing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Insert under the top of the alternative turning chain, which is my first stitch. And yarn over to slip stitch. So that's round one. Now on to round two. First, we're gonna start with another alternative turning chain in the same spot where we joined with a slip stitch. So I'm entering, yarning over, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then insert my hook under that left vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's the alternative turning chain that counts as my first stitch. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work a front post double crochet around this very first stitch. So the front post double crochet, we start by yarning over like normal. And this very first stitch here is the alternative turning chain. I'm just gonna go around it from right to left. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. That's my front post double crochet. And it looks a little goofy right now, but once we get going, it'll smooth out. Then in my next stitch, which is this guy right here, I'm going to work two double crochet on the top of that stitch. These are just two normal double crochet. So this is my first double crochet in that spot, and then my second double crochet. Then we've hit the repeating pattern. So in the next stitch, we're gonna work a double crochet in the top of the stitch. So this is my normal double crochet in the top of it. And then around that stitch that we just worked on the top of, I'm gonna work a front post double crochet. 
So by working a stitch in the top of it and then working the front post stitch around it, that's kind of acting like an increase. In my next stitch, I'm gonna work two double crochet. So do that double crochet increase. But these are both just worked in the top of the stitch. And then I'm going to repeat that three more times where in the next stitch, I'm gonna do a double crochet and then I'll do a front post double crochet around the same stitch. And then in the following stitch, I'll work two double crochet just on the top of it like normal, and I'll meet you once we get to the end of this round. So I just worked my 20th and final stitch of round two. I'm gonna go to the top of my first alternative turning chain right here, insert on the top, and then join the round with a slip stitch. So now on to round three. We're gonna start by working an alternative turning chain in the top of our first stitch, same way as we did for rows one and two. So go into there, finish off this stitch. Then in my next stitch, I'm going to work a double crochet. And then in the same spot, I'm gonna work a front post double crochet around the stitch that I just worked in the top of. So again, it's kind of like doing an increase, except instead of working two in the top, we're working one in the top and one around it. In my next stitch, I'm going to work a double crochet just like normal in the top. In the following stitch, work two double crochet in the top. So this is one, and then two, a second one in that same stitch. So now it's time for our pattern to repeat. We're going to start by working a double crochet in the next stitch. Then in the following stitch, we're gonna do the double crochet in the top, and then a front post double crochet around that same stitch. So right here, work that front post double crochet. In the next stitch, work a double crochet in the top of it just like normal. And then in the following stitch, work two double crochet in the top of it. And then repeat that all the way around three more times. So I'm gonna finish up round three here. We'll join with a slip stitch in the top of the alternative turning chain like we've been doing in the previous rounds. And then I will show you round four. So I joined round three, we are on to round four. And this is where we're gonna get the front post stitches to start creating the spiral pattern. So we again start with the alternative turning chain. So insert in the top, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, insert through that left vertical bar, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Then in that same spot, we're gonna work a double crochet in there. So that kind of counts as an increase, so like two double crochet here. Then in each of the next two stitches, I'm gonna work a double crochet. So a double crochet in the next stitch, and then a double crochet in the following stitch. Now for this next stitch, we're gonna do kind of an increase. So we're gonna work a double crochet in the top of the stitch. And then we're gonna work a front post treble around this front post stitch from the previous round. So instead of yarning over once like I do for the front post double crochets, I'm gonna yarn over twice for a front post treble. So I've yarned over twice. We'll go around the stitch here, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So I worked on the top of that stitch right there and we kind of went backwards and that's gonna start getting it to spiral around. So I don't need to work in this stitch anymore, but then in the next two stitches, I'm gonna work one double crochet in each of them. So one double crochet in the next stitch, and one double crochet also in the next stitch. And now we are ready for our pattern to repeat around. So we're gonna do two double crochet in the same stitch. So this is one, and then two. And then in each of the next two stitches, we're gonna work just one double crochet. So one double crochet in this stitch, and in the next stitch, just one double crochet as well. Then in our next stitch, we're gonna do that funky increase thing where we work a double crochet in the top of the stitch. And then we're gonna yarn over twice and go back around this front post stitch to work our front post treble crochet this time. So that's the treble around the front post from the previous round. And then to finish up the pattern, in each of the next two stitches, we're gonna work just one double crochet. So one in that stitch, and one in that stitch. And this is the pattern that I repeat three more times. I'll join the round and then we'll move on to round five. So I joined round four and we are on to round five. This again starts with the alternative turning chain and that counts as our first stitch. So I'm working that in the same spot where I joined the previous round. 
And then in each of the next two stitches, I'm going to work a double crochet. So this is my first of two, and this is my second one, each in their own stitch. And then the following stitch right here, I'm gonna work two double crochet in the same spot. So this is one, and then here's a second one in the top of the same stitch. Then in each of the next three stitches, I'm going to work one double crochet in each of them. So this is my first one worked in the top of the next stitch. Second one worked in the top of the following stitch. And third one worked in the top of the following stitch. Then things are gonna get a little funky. We're gonna do a double crochet in the top of the following stitch. And then we're going to do a front post treble, so yarn over twice, and go all the way back around this stitch right here, the front post treble from the previous round, and we're gonna work a front post treble around that. So you have to go back to the right a good bit. This is gonna create the spiral pattern. And work that front post treble. And then we are at the repeating pattern. So in each of the next three stitches, I'm going to work one double crochet. So one double crochet, second one in its own stitch, and a third double crochet in its own spot. Then in the following stitch right here, I'm gonna work two double crochet in the same spot. So this is that double crochet increase, so that's my first one. This is my second one in the same spot. Then in each of the next three stitches, work one double crochet. So this is one, this is two in the next stitch, and this is three in the next stitch. Then in the following stitch, we're gonna start with a double crochet in the top of the stitch just like normal. Then we're gonna work that front post treble around this front post treble right here from the previous round. So yarn over twice and go way back under that stitch and finish off the front post treble just like normal. And I'm going to repeat this all the way around. So we've got three more repetitions. I'll join the round with a slip stitch and then I'll show you round six. So I've just completed round five. You can see the swirl pattern starting to form, I'm trying to get a little bit of an angle here so you can see it in person. It's really easy to see the design. But at this point, we should have 50 stitches going all the way around. We are ready for round six and we're gonna change it up just a little bit here. So for round six, we're going to start by chaining one. And in the first three stitches, we're going to work a single crochet in each of those. So a single crochet in the spot where we joined my second one in the following stitch, and a third single crochet in the next stitch. Then we are going to do a front post treble around this guy back here to the right. So I'm gonna yarn over twice. You have to bunch your fabric up a bit. We're aiming for right underneath here, go underneath that from right to left. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two to work that front post treble. And that's making the curve even sharper. So then the pattern that we're going to repeat going around the bag is in the next 10 stitches, I'm going to work a single crochet in each of those. So this is one, two, three, four, five, all single crochet, six, seven, eight, nine, and lastly, 10. So that's my 10th single crochet right there. And then I'm gonna yarn over twice to work that front post treble around the treble stitch from the previous row that's to the right. So we're looking for this guy right here. So you have to go back to the right, all the way over here, work underneath this guy, and work my front post treble. And the fabric might get a little bunchy while you're working the stitch, but then once you finish it, it'll all smooth back out. And then we're going to repeat this around. And then because we started with three single crochet, we'll end with seven single crochet after our fifth front post treble. And we will end up with a total of 55 stitches from this round. So I'm gonna get back to repeating 10 single crochet, followed by a front post treble crochet around the front post stitch from the previous row, that is to the right. So I just finished crocheting around for round six. The last thing I need to do is I need to join the round by slip stitching in the top of my first single crochet of the round to join it. So now round seven is going to be very similar. We're gonna start by chaining one. 
And starting in the very same spot where we joined, we're gonna start with seven single crochet stitches. So my first one here where I joined the round, two, this is three, four, and the next stitch five, six, and then seven. And then after I work my first seven single crochet, we're gonna do a front post treble crochet around the front post treble to the right from the previous round. So again, you might have to kind of bunch up your fabric a little bit to get over there, but we will work the front post treble around that stitch. Just like so. So now the repeating pattern is we're going to work 11 single crochet followed by that front post treble. So this is one, two, three, four, five, working each stitch in its own spot, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. And then we're gonna front post treble around this guy back over here. So pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and get back to repeating the pattern. And of course, on the last repetition, because we worked seven single crochet here to start, after we do our fifth front post treble, we'll just have four more single crochet to finish up the round, and then we'll join with a slip stitch in the top of the first single crochet. So this is through round seven, and we've completed the swirly part of the bag. Now you might be saying, Amanda, I thought the whole point of this bag was you start by making a square shape to turn into a bag. And this is obviously not a square, it's kind of a rounded pentagon shape almost. So the next few rows are going to turn this shape into a square. So for round eight, we're going to start by chaining one. And in the same stitch where we joined the round, we're going to work a single crochet. So that's my first single crochet. And then I'm gonna work two more single crochet, one in each of the next two stitches. So one and then two. So I've worked three single crochet. Then in the next three stitches, I'm going to work half double crochet stitches. That's a yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. So that's my first one. This is my second one. And this is my third half double crochet. Then in each of the next two stitches, I'm gonna work a double crochet stitch. So this is my first double crochet. And then my second double crochet. Then the next stitch here, this is gonna be our corner. So we're going to work three double crochet in the same stitch. So one, two, and three. All in that same spot there, because that's gonna start forming the corner. Then in each of the next two stitches, I'm gonna work a double crochet. So this is one double crochet, and this is two double crochet. Then in each of my next three stitches, I'm going to work a half double crochet. So this is my first half double crochet, my second half double crochet, and a third half double crochet, and then to finish it all off, a single crochet. So then what we did, we'll repeat that again. The basic way to remember it is we have four single crochet in the middle, then on the right and left of it, we're gonna have three half double crochet, then two double crochet on either side of the half double crochet, and then three double crochet in the corner. So to go from corner to corner, it's three double crochet in the same stitch, two double crochet, three half double crochet, and then four single crochet in the middle. So that was my one. This is my second single crochet, third single crochet, and a fourth single crochet. And I'm just working one stitch in each stitch except for the corner. And basically this mirror, so it's like two double crochet, three half double crochet, two single crochet. Then mirror it the other way. Two single crochet, three half double crochet. So one, two, and three. So three half double crochet. Then two double crochet, each in their own stitch. So one, and then two for my second double crochet. And now we're at the corner where we do three double crochet all in the same stitch. So one, 
two, and three. Now hopefully that made sense the way I was describing that. We'll work down one more side and then you'll repeat the pattern of going around. So to go from a corner to the next corner, we're going to do two double crocheting. So one, and then two, each in their own stitch, followed by three half double crochet, each in their own stitch. So one, two, and three. Then in the middle, we do four single crochet. So one, two, three, and four. Then three half double crochet. One, two, and three. Then two double crochet. So one, and two, each in their own stitch. And now we are at the corner where we're going to work three double crochet all in the same spot. So we work one, two, and three. And then I'm gonna keep repeating that all the way around. I've done three of my four corners, so I'll have one more corner over here. And this round will end with a single crochet to make this stretch of single crochet where we started be a total of four. So let me finish this round, and then I will show you the following round. So finishing up round eight, I just need to slip stitch in the top of my first single crochet from the round to join. And if we look at the shape here, we're starting to get a little bit more square. It's a little wrinkly right now, but as we keep building this out, it'll be less wrinkly, more square, and lay flat. Round nine, fortunately, is pretty similar. We're gonna chain one. And the way we work this round is every single crochet stitch gets a single crochet. Every half double crochet stitch gets a half double crochet. And then in the corners, and in the corners, we're gonna do some double crochet and I'll show you how to do that. So we start by chaining one, then we're gonna work three single crochet because our first three stitches are single crochet. So one, two, and three. Then in our next three stitches, we're going to work half double crochet because each of those stitches are a half double crochet. So this is my first half double crochet second half double crochet, and third half double crochet. Then in my next three double crochet, I'm going to work a double crochet. So one, two, and then three. So that's my third double crochet. And that's gonna bring us into the corner. So it's the very middle stitch of the three we did in the corner from last time. And in this stitch, we are going to work five double crochet all in that same spot. So we're going to work one, two, three, four, again, all in the same spot, and five. And then to work along the side, we're going to do a double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So this is one, then two, and three. A half double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So one half double crochet, two half double crochet, and three half double crochet. A single crochet in the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. And now we're back to mirroring it the other way. We're gonna do three half double crochet. One, two, and three. So that's my third half double crochet. Then three double crochet. One, two, and three. And then our next stitch right here is that middle stitch in the corner. That signifies it is the corner for this round. And we're gonna work five double crochet all in that same spot. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then from there, I just need to repeat the pattern working down the other sides. And when we get back to the beginning, we will end with a single crochet stitch. So let me finish up round nine and then I'll show you round 10 and then we'll be almost done with our project. 
Alrighty, now for round 10, which is the final round of the square portion of this pattern. We are basically just going to do double crochet all the way around. So my first stitch is going to be an alternative turning chain like we did at the very beginning, and this will count as my first double crochet. So I'm inserting where we joined the previous round, yarn over, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then in that left vertical bar, insert underneath from right to left, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's the alternative turning chain. Counts as my first double crochet. And then in the next 10 stitches, I'm going to work a single double crochet in each of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. That brings me to the next stitch, which is the corner. And in the corner stitch, we're going to work five double crochet all in the same spot. So one, second one in the same spot, third one in the same stitch, fourth one in the same stitch, and fifth one, all in the corner there. And then to finish going them all the way around, I'm going to work 20 double crochet, five in the corner, 20 double crochet, five in the corner, 20 double crochet, five in the corner, and then nine more, and then join with a slip stitch in the top of the alternative turning chain. So at this point, our square is complete and it's time to turn it into a rectangle. So to do this, I'm gonna flip my work over and slip stitch to this corner on the right, and then we'll work a rose along this side. I'm just gonna turn my project over and go to my next stitch and work a slip stitch. Next spot, work a slip stitch there as well. And I'm gonna slip stitch all the way to the middle stitch of the corner. Keep working along here. And two more slip stitches to make it to the middle stitch of the corner. And now I'm in the middle stitch of the corner and I'm gonna turn my work back over and now I'm gonna work double crochet along this side of the bag. Now in my case, I need to work 26 double crochet across. But if you did a different pattern for your square piece, you may have a different number. But whether you work this square or a different square, you want to basically, once you're done with your square and the size you want it to be, you want to end up in a corner, whether you slip stitch over, whether you detach and reattach yarn, but you want to end up in the corner so that we can start working rows back and forth along one side of our square. So in my case, I'm going to work double crochet rows back and forth. You could do single crochet rows back and forth, half double crochet, whatever you want. But I'm gonna work double crochet and we're gonna start in this corner here. And I'm gonna start with an alternative turning chain as my first double crochet, just so I can skip the turning chains. And I'll let this count as my first double crochet. So that's my first one. And then I'm gonna go all along the top edge and work double crochet until I make it to the corner. And then I will work rows back and forth until my bag is the height that I want it to be. So I'm almost to the middle stitch of the corner, which is the last spot where I will work. And just finishing up the row with double crochet stitches. That right there is my last one in the corner. So for this square, when you include the alternative turning chain as the first double crochet stitch, it takes 26 double crochet to get across the top. So that I'm calling row 11. And now for rows 12 through 15, I'm going to repeat row 11 and just work back and forth. I'm gonna turn my work. My first stitch I'm gonna make be that alternative turning chain. And then I will follow it up with 25 double crochets in each of the 25 remaining stitches. Well, not 25 in each of them, but you know what I mean. 25 stitches to get across the row, and then repeat that all the way until row 15. Of course, if you want your bag to be taller or shorter, you can repeat more rows or less rows than what I'm doing here. But I'm gonna finish up this panel, and then I'll show you how we attach them. All right, so at this point, the two panels are finished. Just as a quick note, 
you might notice the top's a little like wavy. And that's just because of tension and because there's a little bit more tension down here, a little looser tension up top just because of the stitches used. But in the end, that's not gonna matter once we attach them together, it's gonna all even out. So there's a couple ways to attach this. One is to sew them with like a whip stitch or just up and down kind of stitch. But what I'm going to do, because it's both very easy and I think it gives a unique result, is I'm going to put the two panels together and then single crochet around them. So here's what I mean. This is the back side of a panel. This is the back side of the other one. Stick them back side to back side. So right side facing up, right side facing up. Now we'll start up here in this corner. I will take my yarn, make a slip knot, and put the slip knot on my hook. And now I'm going to single crochet all around this outer edge. So if I come to up top here, I'm just gonna go through the very top up here somewhere on my first panel. And then on the opposite side, kind of a matching spot. Going through the very top corner of both panels. Yarn over, pull up a loop through both panels. Yarn over and finish that single crochet stitch. So for this first section, we're working in the sides of the double crochet. I'm gonna work two single crochet in the sides of each double crochet row. That was my first one. Then I'm gonna work a second double crochet. And I try to go under two strands on each piece of fabric. I think it just gives it a little stronger hold and you're less likely to get gaping and gapping. So I'm working my second single crochet. So two single crochet at the end of this row of double crochet. Go down to my next one, go under the top panel, under the back panel, and work a single crochet. And we'll fit a second one in right here at the end of that row. Going down to this third row here, row 13 on both panels. Starting somewhere through the top. And top, working a single crochet. And then I'll insert through the side of the stitch. And I'm just kind of making up where I actually insert. Just figure out what makes sense. And if you just space yours further apart or close together, do whatever gives you a good result. But I'm just trying to aim to put two single crochet per row of double crochet so that it's nice and even and I get a secure hold along this top edge. And because I'm doing that on this side up here, when I get down to this side, I'm gonna need to remember to do the same. And then now right here, I'm gonna go in that corner space on the top panel, corner space on the back panel, I'll work that single crochet. And then for the rest of this section here, I'm just gonna work in the tops of stitches. So the top of the stitch on the front panel, top of the stitch on the back panel, single crochet. Go through the stitches on both panels, and single crochet. And just keep working on down and around the edge of the bag with single crochet stitches. So I just finished working single crochet all the way around the edge of the bag. Here's a little closer look at that. And now I just need to fasten off. Now at this point, our bag is still missing handles, but just for a quick reference, this is how much yarn I have left from one skein of Hobby Lobby's I Love This Cotton. And each skein has 153 yards, just to give you an idea of how much yarn this might take. So as far as how handles go, I'm just going to braid the last little bit and try to make some little braided handles or something because I don't think I have quite enough to do crochet handles and I don't want to grab another skein of this yarn. But of course you can crochet handles on here, just do rows of double crochet back and forth and then tack it down on the other side. You can do a braided handle like I'm going to try to do, or you could even add something that's not crochet, like just add some ribbon handles. So for handles, I took the last bit of yarn from that skein and I braided them together and I've got another skein of this yarn and I'm just gonna use a little bit of it and I'll sew these handles onto the top inside here, weave in all my ends and then show you the finished result. And here is a look at the finished bag. Again, you can do the handles differently. And of course you can do the square portion of the bag differently, but I love how simple this project is because you can go as crazy as you want with the square section of the bag, or you can go with a very simple basic design, change out the colors, and you can also get a custom size bag. So however wide you want your bag to be, you need to make your square that wide. And then to get your bag to the height you want it, just do enough rows on one side of the square to get the height you want. 
So here you go, here's the finished project. As I said, you can do the handles different ways and you can customize this portion of the bag to include whatever design you want. But I hope you guys enjoy this project. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and drop a comment down below letting me know what crochet projects you're working on and I'll catch you on my next video. Happy crafting.